Very well, then I command you. As your princess and the heir to the throne, you are commanded to remain in King's Landing and at my side. It's been eight years, Sweetling. Half of them never do, you know. What? Hatch. Will they let me stay? Well, who let you stay? The Prince of Pentos. I don't understand. He wants you and father. And Bela. Because you have dragons. There is more than one way to bind yourself to a dragon. I was without one until I was 15 years old. And now I ride a bagel, the largest in the world. You have a harder road. Bela's dragon was born to her. But if you wish to be a rider, you must claim that right. Your father will tell you the same. Father ignores me. He's doing his best. Leonor has written. Rhaenyra has delivered another son. Does your brother mention if this one also bears a marked but entirely coincidental resemblance to the commander of the city watch? <laughs> he seems to have left that detail out. Yeah. I miss my brother, Damon. As I think do you. I miss Westrossy's strong wine. It could be depended on for a few hours of peaceful oblivion. Amber shit they drink here. Do you never long for home? No. I don't believe you. Believe what you please. You laud the virtues of Pentos, but you have no interest in it. If you did, you would venture into the city, but instead you spend your time here, in the library, reading accounts of the same dead dragon lords whose legacy you claim has no hold on you. Didn't know I was being so minutely observed. You do not sleep. Well, how can I, with you haunting my every move? Life has, I know, disappointed you. Huh. Perhaps I, too, am not the wife you would have wished for yourself. Lena. It does not pain me. I have made my peace. But you are more than this, statement. The man I married is more than this. It is Lord Blackwell's contention, therefore, that the Brackens move the boundary stones at the dead of the night and put their horses to graze in his field. Well, why was this issue not brought before Lord Grover? Has he grown so feeble he cannot settle a quarrel over rocks? I've heard tale that Lord Grover's son now rules River Run in all but name. Well, he's also a Tully. And this remains a Tully problem. I would agree. If we may move on, my lord. And lords. yet, the Brackens and the Blackwoods will use any excuse to spill each other's blood. So, this dispute bears looking into. There will be country folk who know where the lines have been drawn for generations. That is easy enough. Sir Tylen, uh, we should address the latest developments in the Stepstones, my lords. Oh, ever be shut of that blasted place. If you ask me, I think the Blackwoods have the upper hand. No. We've moved on to the Stepstones, Lord Eastbury. And the Triarchy's new alliance with Dawn? I was hoping our negotiations with Sunspear might persuade them to see reason. <coughs> <coughs> to trust a Martel is to be disappointed. Where, I wonder, is our Prince Damon? I suppose I should call him King, as he styled himself when he won a battle there. Once. That was a decade ago, and he has since left the region undefended. We have left undefended. There should have been fortifications built. Watchtowers, a fleet of ships, a garrison of soldiers sent to hold our ground. We cannot afford it. Our coffers are great, but not infinite. We must consider the cost to our subjects. I must the cost of war is greater. But we have been lax, and the old monster now lifts its head. Let us be finished. Wait. 
I wish to speak. Be seated. I have felt the strife between our families of late, my queen. And for any offence given by mine, I apologise. But we are one house. And long before that, we were friends. My son, Jocerus, will inherit the Iron Throne after me. I propose we betroth him to your daughter, Helena. Ally ourselves, once and for all. Let them rule together. A most judicious proposition. Additionally, if Cyrax brings forth another clutch of eggs, your son, Aemond, will have his choice of them. Uh, a symbol of our goodwill. Venera. Oh, Seven Hells. Um... My dear, a dragon's egg is a handsome gift. The King and I thank you for your offer and we will consider it duly. You must rest now, husband. How sweetly the fox speaks when it's been cornered by the hound. She is sincere. She is desperate. She feels the earth washing away beneath her feet, and now she expects us to ignore her transgressions and for me to marry my only daughter to one of her plain featured sons. The proposal is a good one, my queen. We're a family. Let us put aside these childish quarrels. Join hands and be stronger for it. You may do as you wish, husband. When I am cold in my grave. Alison. Alison. I do not need the plate. The hand, you're right. The king is resting. I will see him. Move forward. I'm being endlessly fussed over Lionel. It's a wonder I can visit the privy alone. Your Grace. What might this errand be about, Lord Lionel? Your Grace, I feel that. I have come to resign my position as Hand of the King. The episode in the yard this morning, my son Harwin has disgraced himself, and every fishwife in King's Landing will soon be telling the tale. Young Harwin's outburst was unfortunate, it's true. But he's been expelled from the city watch. That seems punishment enough. Forgive me, Your Grace, it is not. You have served me faithfully for many years. Tell his hand. Your advice has been sage. Unmark my self-interest, which stands in contrast to all others. You speak kind words, but there is a shadow over my house and it grows ever darker. I can no longer serve you with integrity. What is this shadow? Name it if it casts such a gloom. Yes, you must have your reasoning in plain language. I cannot. Then I cannot accept this. My dear husband. I said no. If you insist, my king. I do. You will continue in your service.